Hello, I'm Benjamin with Azure Standard and Uncommon Care. I'm headed to the outback of South Australia to visit a farmer that I think produces the best tasting carob in the world. Really looking forward to this and I'm learning all about your carobs. It's going to be great. So I get asked often, what is carob? Like what part of the carob do we use in the finished product? Could you show me what carob is? Well, we got the carob here on our trays. It's yeah, ready for harvesting because it's just falling off in your hand. So what we use is the actual outer husk. So you got there the outer part of the carob. We don't use the seed. Okay. The seed is actually an emulsifier. So we don't use that in our products. So you use we it use in thickening agents thickening and stuff agent. like that. Yeah, that's yeah. like a spin gum. But we use all the outer husk and that's just nice and sweet. For the okay. varieties that we've chosen, that's just so um, the natural sugars and our roasted carob powder is just this all like broken up without any seeds and just roast it to perfection and then yeah, grind it up through the mill, which we do here on farm as well. Tell us about the variety of carob that you've chosen to grow here. I understand that you've chose varieties different than what the standard yeah. is. Why wouldn't everybody choose sweet? Because carob has traditionally been grown for the thickening agent in the seed. That's where the most money is. But you can't have your cake and eat it too. In that, if you have a top quality seed, the actual outer carapod doesn't taste very nice. We went the other way. Our seed quality is not very good, but we don't grow up for the seed. Okay, so your carob is one of the only ones commercially grown varieties in the world that they actually grow for eating, not for the thickening agent that the seed's made out of. That's, that's awesome. You put a, you know, a lot of foresight investment time, you have to see 15 years into the future in order to make this happen. Why care? And so I want to hear, still driving your passion now for care. Did you like care? Was it something that no. you didn't like care? And that's why I planted it. See? Because I liked certain varieties. I liked what I tasted as a carrot, but I didn't like the carrot powder, which I tried in the shops. So, and that's where I thought I could find a point of difference in the market by growing only nice sweet varieties. And that way there'd be possibly a market for a nice sweet tasting carrot instead of what was offered at the time. It's easy to see your passion for growing naturally. Why is organic so important to you? My gardening years and seeing farmers where it doesn't matter how much they seem to spray, then they have another weed come. Yeah. And they have to add more, then do more. And it's a never-ending kiln, really, instead of making everything live. So when the soil can live, you've got your bugs, you've got your worms, you've got your goodness, which all the trees can keep on feeding them. And when you're looking at that, it creates its own ecosystem. Okay. And the soil creates its own living and the manure, we have kangaroos, we have the worms, we have all yeah. things like that. That really is a natural environment. You've told me a lot about the processes you've done and the equipment you've made in order to really get a superior, clean product. Could you tell us a little bit more about that effort? Well, I have high expectations on what I think, you know, my own kitchen, cleanliness, clean hands, clean benches, just everything clean. And we've put the same effort into everything we do in the factory, with the handling, all our machinery, from the um, shaker equipment, the harvesting is our own and it's all nice and clean. So it's not being contaminated with anything else. In the factory with the pickling, roasting, milling, packing. I think everything should be what I would expect it to be have an eat off, nice clean environment. Right. And then your machines don't let a single product touch the ground. No. So everything comes right off the tree, straight onto the machines. So we're ending up in the shed with a nice clean carob. Then we wash it from there. Okay. So I wash off any dust and dirt or anything that's gone onto the carob pods. So that a nice clean edible item. And is this standard in the industry? Does everybody do this process? No, we're the only processors in the world that wash their carob. And same as what I believe people would expect from me, with my machinery, within my shed, to be able to 
know that we've gone to that extent as well and they trust in us. After visiting our farmer, there's no doubt he is setting a new, higher standard for Terra. Azure Market is proud to bring this superfood to your table, and we're confident you too will enjoy a new love for Terra.